Hello everyone, and welcome back to the Fluctus channel. Aircraft are one of the most advanced pieces of machinery on the planet. And with time, they are becoming even more complex. Whenever a new aircraft is developed, the manufacturers perform a wide range of tests to ensure that all the aircraft's components are up to mark. From testing individual parts and components, to performing countless friction and stress tests on the aircraft. The manufacturers make sure that the aircraft is ready to take the skies. Airbus is one of Europe's top aerospace corporations that excels in the development of commercial aircraft. When an aircraft is developed, the Airbus puts it through vigorous testing on the runway by performing maximum energy braking, a test during which the maximum amount of energy is put into the brakes to bring an aircraft to a complete stop on the runway after an aborted takeoff. The test is usually performed with an aircraft at maximum takeoff weight while traveling at maximum speeds. Boeing, an American multinational corporation, also performs this test using its commercial aircraft, such as the Boeing 787-9 Dreamliner. It demonstrates how this mighty aircraft can safely stop at short notice before takeoff, even when fully loaded. The aircraft is not only loaded to its maximum weight, but it is also equipped with brakes that are 99% worn. It accelerates up to 200 knots on ground speed, and once it reaches the takeoff speed, the pilot slams on the brakes, ultimately stopping the aircraft. We grind the brakes down to the thinnest that they can ever be, we deactivate one of the brakes to simulate that there's a failure. So, I mean, this we go to extreme lengths to make sure that the test is the absolute possible worst case scenario. When Boeing developed its 747-8 aircraft, it was subjected to a series of tests where it showed plenty of power on takeoff. However, the manufacturers were not sure how the aircraft would handle all this energy if it had to suddenly stop during an emergency. Which is why the aircraft was subjected to a rejected takeoff, or RTO test. Initially, the crew installed the worn out brakes and fueled the aircraft up to a maximum takeoff weight of just over 975,000 pounds. The pilot pushed all four engines to maximum thrust, and just as the aircraft reached 200 knots, the pilot applied the brakes to stop the aircraft immediately. The test was a success, as the aircraft stopped earlier than the team had hoped, beating the target by more than 200 meters. There's much more to stopping the aircraft during a rejected takeoff procedure. The pilots are not allowed to apply the reverse thrusters, which is why the entire kinetic energy of the aircraft is dissipated in terms of heat, which in turn engulfs the carbon brakes in smoke. Commercial aircraft travel around the globe and sometimes encounter extreme weather conditions that pose several challenges to aviation equipment. However, aircraft such as the Airbus A350 operate under extreme conditions regularly. To ensure that these aircraft perform as they're intended to, Airbus deploys the A350 to an area like Iqaluit, Canada 
where temperatures can reach as low as negative 28 degrees Celsius or more. These conditions are perfect for testing various components of the plane, like landing gear, engines, and electrical systems. During the extreme weather testing, the air crew places temperature sensors at multiple points on the fuselage, the wings, and inside the cockpit. The aircraft is powered down overnight and then monitored the next morning to evaluate how different components have been affected by exposure to low temperatures. Working in the cold is quite difficult because working on aircraft is already something difficult. You have to think a million of things together. Uh, it's very complex. And then you combine that with working in the cold, which are harsh environment. You cannot stay outside too long. For the guys who are outside, for example, the mechanics, it's very difficult. Takeoffs and landings are preferably performed in the direction of the wind to ease the control of the airplane. But unprecedented meteorological conditions sometimes alter the usual wind patterns. Therefore, the pilots perform a cross-wind test and compete with the wind to maneuver the aircraft on the runway. The team expects a perpendicular wind that exceeds the crosswind threshold to maximize the effectiveness of the test. During the demonstration, the pilots follow the crabbed technique, which keeps the wings level and the nose pointed toward the wind. On the other hand, when the aircraft reaches the touchdown point, the pilot decrabs the aircraft. The crabbing technique should be used at the right time. A decrab that is too early could drift the aircraft on the runway, whereas a late decrab could exert excessive force on the landing gears. When an aircraft takes off or lands on a contaminated runway covered with a significant amount of water, its wheels create a water spray that may damage the engine, hydraulic pipes, and electrical harnesses on the gears. To overcome this problem, the engineers design the aircraft in a way that the water is directed around the fuselage rather than directly towards the intake. They perform a water ingestion test on a water trough up to 100 meters long. The general technique is to accelerate the aircraft from a start point and reach the trough at the required speed and the correct thrust. After each test, an aircraft inspection is performed to check for possible damages to the landing gear, engines, and other components. Modern commercial aircraft are equipped with state-of-the-art technologies, which symbolize safety and security. However, the safety factor depends on the months-long tests conducted on the aircraft after production. The manufacturers perform aircraft flight testing, simulate real-world scenarios, and evaluate the aircraft's performance. They are pushed to the extreme limits through a test called vertical takeoff test. In this case, when the pilot attains the takeoff speed, he immediately pulls back on the stick. As a result, the aircraft climbs vertically towards the sky. The vertical takeoff is merely a complementary test, as it would never be executed with passengers aboard unless there is an emergency. During the tests, the pilots also perform other maneuvers, like sharp turns and descents, 
to ensure the aircraft is bound to take the skies. These kinds of demonstrations are common at air shows around the globe. Whenever a company like Boeing releases a new model, they showcase their technology at international air shows to attract potential buyers. For example, a Boeing 777X put on an impressive flying display at Dubai Air Show in 2021. Airbus develops both commercial and military aircraft. The A400M Atlas is one of the largest transport aircraft made by the company. It is 148 feet long, features a wingspan of 140 feet, and carries a whopping 173,000 pounds of weight. However, when empty, this turboprop-powered aircraft can take off at a near vertical angle. The way it turns in the air and executes impressive maneuvers makes the A400M surprisingly agile for a transport aircraft. During the flight, the aircraft may also be subjected to negative gravity for brief periods, which may cause issues in electrical circuits, engine operation, fuel feeding, and hydraulic systems. The negative gravity tests are carried out to check whether or not the aircraft functions properly when subjected to negative gravity. During a single flight, the aircraft flies for a total of 20 seconds at less than zero G, as well as for a continuous period of at least seven seconds with a maximum thrust. Moreover, it also performs a maneuver containing at least two excursions to less than zero G in rapid succession. All aircraft systems are checked and evaluated after each sequence. One of the worst case scenarios for an aircraft would be to lose an engine in mid-air. When this happens, an aircraft loses a significant amount of thrust, making it nearly impossible to maintain its maximum speed or altitude. To evaluate how its 787-9 Dreamliner would react in such a situation, Boeing performed a series of abuse takeoffs. During this test, the 787-9 took off with a significantly reduced engine thrust. This was followed up by the Velocity for Minimum Control on Ground Test or VMCG, in which the pilot maneuvers down the runway and turns off an engine. In such a case, the pilot must respond with a full rudder to stop the plane from drifting off the runway. The goal is to ensure the aircraft recovers without going more than 30 degrees off course during such an event. We consider it very remote. It could happen and we designed the airplane to handle it. So if you ever lose one engine, pilots are trained completely to continue the flight with one engine, uh, come back and safely land. The preparedness of the pilot is of utmost importance for handling emergencies. They are trained to identify potential hazards and take measures to reduce risks. Prioritizing and ensuring the safety of passengers, crew members, and the aircraft. That's the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. 
make sure to subscribe to this channel so you don't miss any of our new content. See you next time.